Survivors have been fighting off zombies for 49 hours straight. Hello all. This is Jacobson and this is a brief retelling of the third and fourth episodes of the tenth season of the zombie series The Walking Dead. You can see the previous episodes at the links in the video description. As soon as this video gets 300 likes, I will release the next part. Also leave your comments, it will help promote the video. Have fun watching it. For the next 49 hours, the residents of Alexandria resist the waves of walkers that have surged through the gates of the community. The group is exhausted, but they manage to kill all the walkers. Recovering from the grueling battle, Michonne checks on her children, although Judith reminds her that it's not safe to sleep. She receives a call on the walkie-talkie and discovers that a new herd of walkers is approaching from different directions. In the morning, residents clear the community of corpses, and Eugene warns that it's an hour until the next wave. Michonne is tired, and Daryl feels her disappointment. Suddenly, Gamma appears at the gate, which tells them to go to the northern border, lay down their weapons and wait. Michonne asks her to recall the walkers, but swears that they are not theirs. She again orders them to go wait for Alpha at the border. At an emergency council meeting, Lydia confirms that her mother is not behind the attacks because she would have sent the whole herd. Margot speaks on behalf of the robbers and demands justice, and Gage wants to put the heads of the whisperers on thorns. Siddick has a panic attack and leaves. Daryl confirms that he has seen tens of thousands of walkers in the Alpha stage. Michonne tells everyone that instead of retaliation, she and a small group will meet with Alpha at the border to settle everything. Michonne then develops a plan. Gabriel will lead the group against the North Wave, Aaron will take care of the South Wave, and Michonne will lead the group to the border. Gabriel orders Aaron to take Negan with him to fight alongside him due to the shortage of soldiers at the moment. Meanwhile, Carol hides the revolver in her pants and takes a few pills before heading with the others to the border. In the forest, Negan and Aaron kill several walkers. When Negan finds the crowbar, Aaron demands that he put it down. Negan says he's not the guy he claims to be, but Aaron forces him to keep using the broom to kill the staying walkers. Returning to Alexandria in the evening, Eugene and Rosita fight off a small herd of walkers at the gate. He claims that he can continue killing them, despite her offer to return to the house and rest for the rest of the night. Meanwhile, Daryl, Michonne, Carol and some others stay at the border and lay down their weapons. Alpha stays with several whisperers and reminds them to stay away from her land. Michonne explains that the fire would have wiped Oceanside off the face of the earth, and they crossed the border only once. But Alpha reminds her of two other times when they violated the border. Alpha declares that there will be no bloodshed, and instead announces that he is moving the border as punishment. Carol says they don't have to listen to her nonsense. Daryl tries to persuade her to leave, but Alpha says he won't leave until Carol looks down at her feet. Alpha tells Carol that she should be afraid of her, but Carol replies that she doesn't feel anything at all. Alpha reminds her how Henry was afraid of her before she decapitated him, which causes Carol to pull out a gun and shoot. Michonne manages to hit her in the arm, and she misses while the Whisperers draw their weapons. Michonne apologizes to Alpha for Carol's behavior, and Alpha says he forgives her. Back at the camp, Carol tells Michonne, the bitch has to die. Daryl tells Michonne that she is not the same as before, after the boat. Suddenly, Carol notices nearby whisperers and makes a shot, but misses. Michonne orders the group to capture, not kill them. Elsewhere, Negan destroys a walker with a crowbar, and Aaron demands that he tie himself up. When Negan tries to pull him away, Aaron pushes him to the ground. I did what I had to do then, says Negan about his past actions. Aaron asks why Eric had to die, and Negan tells him that if he doesn't protect what belongs to him, then it belongs to someone else. Aaron replies that if he failed Eric, then Negan failed his wife, and she died hating him. Suddenly, Aaron is attacked by walkers when Negan runs away. He kills them, but the blood makes his eyes blurry. Meanwhile, Michonne doubts Carol's claims and suggests that the pills she is taking are affecting her, but Carol shrugs it off. Then the group stays in an abandoned school to rest. Looking around the room, Carol finds a textbook where, in hallucinations, she sees herself at the head of the table, at which Sophia, Lizzie, Micah, 
Henry, and Sam are sitting. She decides to keep watch while the group sleeps. Daryl accompanies her and tells the story that his father was a trucker and once he had hallucinations when he saw a girl on the road. He says that staying awake for a few hours can make a person see different things, but Carol dismisses him. Suddenly, her alarm goes off, and she takes pills, despite his persuasions. Returning to the forest, Aaron looks for Negan, but can hardly see. He stumbles upon a hut where Negan waits patiently and hides behind it. Because of his blurred vision, Aaron beats against a hut that walkers have broken into. Negan saves him with a crowbar and tells him that the flowers growing from walkers are called wormwood and can lead to blindness. He gives him water and says they will leave in the morning. At school, Carol continues to look around. In a dark hallway, she hears Henry, then turns around and gets stabbed by a mysterious figure. When she wakes up, she realizes that it was a dream. Daryl finds her and she claims she's fine. Carol insists it doesn't sound like the story of his trucker father, but a confused Daryl says he didn't tell her anything. Her alarm goes off, and she is surprised to find her pills in her pocket, thinking that she threw them away earlier. She tells Daryl she wants to watch for another hour. As he leaves, Carol sees the Whisperer walking down the hallway and follows him. Carol walks into the gym and falls into a trap that traps her upside down. The Whisperer brings a group of walkers to her, and she deals with them, freeing herself. After killing all the walkers, Carol frees herself and gets up when the alarm goes off and everyone enters the room. In Alexandria, Sadiq and Dante tend to Carol's wounds. Sidik's vision blurs again when he tries to take the equipment to put stitches on her. Dante tells him that he will do it instead. After that, they tell Daryl and Michonne that she's fine. At dawn, Aaron regains his sight and tells Nigan that he can finally see. Meanwhile, Eugene and Rosita argue that he is trying to protect her. She shouts that he is not the father of the cook and they will never be together. Eugene admits that he believes that their entire friendship was based on his beliefs that one day he could change her mind and leaves with a broken heart. Outside, Siddick sees him leaving the house upset until Michonne approaches him. He says he's just tired, and she leaves. Dante brings Sadiq a drink and explains that he was a field medic during the fighting in Iraq. He says he understands what he has to go through, as he also suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. In an idyllic dream, Carol wakes up to the sound of music and sees Daryl cooking in the kitchen. She then sees Henry at the kitchen table, who asks her where she is going. In reality, Carol wakes up and picks up an empty pill bottle, a tear rolls from her eye. When she goes downstairs, she sees that Michonne is waiting for her. She swears she saw the whisperers, but Michonne says no one else saw them. Michonne returns to her house to relax with her children. Judith is looking after RJ, and Michonne is in bed with them. She explains that everything is safe for now. Later, Carol asks Daryl if he believes her about the whisperers, and he replies that he does. Returning to school, one of the whisperers finds himself among the corpses and wakes up revived. This proves that, despite numerous hallucinations, the whisperers she saw were real. In Alexandria, Daryl joins Michonne and her children and they have lunch together. He then leaves a tray of food outside Carol's room and leaves, and she soon picks it up. Meanwhile, Lydia is strolling through the streets, passing Rosita and Gabriel, who are walking a coke. She smiles at the trembling Siddick from afar, but he runs back to his house, upsetting her. In the hilltop, Magna and Yumika make love until Ezekiel can't sleep. Suddenly, a giant tree falls through the fence wall onto one of the trailers earlier in the nine residents. While the residents of Hilt are helping the wounded, Coney assumes that the whisperers are to blame for everything, and the rest decide where to place the wounded. Yumika orders them to be placed in Maggie's office, ignoring Magna's suggestion. The next morning, residents realize that a small herd has appeared outside the walls of the community. Yumika leads the group outside to fight them off. Meanwhile, Aaron trains the Alexandrians in combat training, while Gage, Margot, and Alfred taunt Lydia and angrily order her to leave. On the way, Michonne leads the column towards Hilltop. She advises Judith never to take her enemies at their word. 
Judith suggests that the Whisperers are probably trying to tire them out, as RJ does before going to bed, which impresses Michonne. Suddenly, Michonne notices that Iskiel is driving into the forest alone, and orders the group to continue on their way while she investigates. She goes to the forest and finds Iziki or on the edge of a cliff contemplating suicide. Michonne hugs him and tells him it's okay, prompting him to kiss her. After a few seconds, he pulls away and apologizes. In Alexandria, Lydia comes to Nigan and tells him about her abusers, and Nigan advises her not to react. Daryl suddenly appears and orders her to leave. She's just trying to fit in, says Negan. Daryl tells him that this won't happen if he's around her. Then he catches up with Lydia to scold her for talking to him when they notice the inscription silence the whisperer on the door of their house. Back in the forest, Ezekiel jokes to Funny that they could have been together in another universe and reminds her how much he has lost. She admits that she once envied walkers, wishing they would bite her. She also tells him that things get better in the end when she remembers Rick, which makes her cry. Then they return to their horses, and Ezekiel thanks her for her advice and support. In the Alexandria dining room, Lydia is sitting at the table of Gage, Margot and Alfred. To their disgust, she removes the skin from the squirrel in front of them and mimics their shushing. Later, Daryl tells her not to do that anymore, but she defends herself and leaves. That evening Lydia walks and gets ambushed by her abusers. Margot accuses her of putting her friends' heads on spikes, but Lydia reminds them that she had nothing to do with it and says that she is one of them. They throw Lydia to the ground and start beating her brutally. Suddenly, Negan comes to Lydia's aid and throws Margot into the wall. While he defends Lydia, a terrified Gage says they were just trying to scare her. Brendan arrives and they realize that Margot has died after colliding with a wall. Daryl and the residents are staying to assess the situation. Alfred blames Negan for Margot's death, but Lydia shouts that it's not his fault. Daryl believes her, but orders Negan to return to the cell. Siddick's memories begin again, and he runs to the infirmary to wash his face in a basin of cold water. In the infirmary, Dante finishes dressing Lydia, and Daryl examines her. He tells her that he is sorry that this happened, and she claims that her father would have protected her. Daryl hugs her and she tells him that Negan saved her. Some time later, Daryl comes to Negan's cell to talk to him. He tells Nigan that people want him dead, but Nigan claims it was an accident, and Margot was still a bastard for beating up a child. Daryl asks why he helped her, and Negan replies that he believes in their lifestyle. Daryl promises that he will have a chance to tell his version, and leaves. Near his house, he meets Carol in the best condition. She asks what he's going to do with Negan. I believe her, he replies. Carol reminds him that the real enemy is still out there somewhere and says they should have gone to New Mexico. Back at the hilltop, the group kills as many walkers as they can to protect the walls. Unexpectedly, Michonne and Ezekiel, Judith and the others join the battle. During the fight, Michonne notices Judith single-handedly dealing with walkers, and smiles proudly. In Alexandria, the council holds an emergency meeting with Gage and Alfred, who lie and say they were attacked. Gabriel asks why only Lydia is in the infirmary. They tell how their friends were beheaded by the Whisperers, and now Margot is dead. Meanwhile, Daryl contacts Funny on the Hilltop radio to inform her of the situation. Michonne asks if she should go home, but Daryl tells her to stay as long as Hilltop needs her. Michonne tells him that Lydia needs to be protected regardless of the outcome because she believes Alpha will be harsher on them if Lydia leaves, and reminds Daryl that Alpha chose him to be Lydia's protector. She also asks Daryl to be her proxy when voting in the council about Negan. Before signing up, she receives an emergency call from Oceanside. While the council is discussing different opinions, Daryl comes and says that he believes Lydia, which leads to a preponderance of votes. Gabriel announces that he will take the night to make a decision until tomorrow. The next morning at the Hilton, Michonne announces at a meeting that she will go to the ocean site to provide help due to the activity of the Whisperers, and Eugene decides to stay and help fix the wall. She also decides to take Judith with her after she proved herself in battle. When Yumika checks on Magna, 
she angrily declares that Yumika should stop making decisions for everyone and reminds her that she is no longer her lawyer. Later that day, the group prepares the convoy for departure to Oceanside, and Luke says goodbye to his close friends, deciding to visit Jules. Back in Alexandria, Gabriel discovers that Negan has disappeared from his cell and runs to inform Daryl about it. Later, Gabriel and Aaron are discussing Negan's escape when Lydia walks by and tells them it's her fault. Daryl rushes there and discovers that Lydia has locked herself in a cell. He says he knows she didn't do it because she didn't leave the house that night. However, Lydia prefers to stay in the cell because she feels safer and laments that she cannot be like him. Daryl leaves in sadness, and then begins to wash graffiti off the walls around the community.